Hello, this is Nick and I'm going to teach you a bit about Fanuc robotic arm. Right here we have a basic six axis robotic arm on a stand that I've drawn and right here we have a computer representation of the teach pendant. Now your teach pendant might look a little different, it varies on occasions from version to version, but for the most part they have the same functionality. And the basic layout of a teach pendant is we have our screen right here which will display whatever it is you are displaying based on the screen you uh, are in. We have the F keys right here which are used to select options within that screen. They will change their words based on uh, the screen you're on or what section of the screen you are on. We have the status lights up here, the status text right here, they'll give you um, information on errors and uh, what line it's on, if it's uh, the status, the uh, jogging representation you're in, and right here we have the overlay speed. Now for the buttons down here, um, we have the number pad right here, the jog buttons right here, the jog info uh, stuff right here, such as forward in the program, backwards in the program, the type of coordinate frame you want to jog in, and the speed. We'll go over more of this a little later as we start using it. Uh, we also have the direction pad right here, which is how you will navigate through screens using up, down, left, and right, and the enter key to select. The previous key right here is somewhat of a cancel key if you ever need to um, cancel out of something such as you uh, started typing um, the wrong thing and you realize you need to cancel what you're typing or you opened up a menu that you did not need opened. We have the reset key which is used to reset any fault that you might have and we have the shift key which must be held down for any motion. Now, uh, the other aspect is we have the teach pendant on key. Um, if this is on, then you will be able to jog and move the robot around and uh, make changes to programs a lot easier. If it's off, then you are somewhat limited in what you can do. We'll talk about limitations a little later. Now, the first button I really want to go into is the display button right here. Uh, right now we're in a very zoomed in screen and it makes it a little hard to see everything. So by holding shift and pressing the display button I can choose the type of window I have. I'm going to go to shift, go down to double, and we now have a double screen. This uh, is how you will find most robot controllers when you are on site. They also might have any triple screen which splits the second screen up into three screens. Um, feel free to customize this as you want to whatever is best for you. And as I stated earlier, you can press the previous button to get out of any menu that you might have opened. Now as we go through this, I'm going to give you some basic instruction on what uh, the data in each screen is used for. For now though, I'm going to keep our focus simple by just having a single screen open. Uh, first we have the inputs and outputs, which can be easily accessed through this button right here. This is the I.O. button. It will bring you to the I.O. screen and it will display the last type of I.O. that you had open. In this case, I had digital outputs open. You can change the type of I.O. you are looking at by pressing type. This will be your F1 key. Now, this is F1, this is F2, F3, F4, and F5. The F keys aren't uh, displayed in this display as easily due to this RoboGuide menu. But to have a clearer understanding of what you will be looking at, I will quickly show you the F keys here. This is what they'll look like on um, your teach pendant and in the IO menu you'll see type written right there. Okay. But for the most part 
I'm going to use this uh, um, other view so that you actually have a much larger view for one and it's a lot clearer because it will actually show you everything in color with the static light and the messages it's just a lot easier for you to follow so we have our digital outputs open right now if we wanted to see the digital inputs we press the in out button right here and now we're seeing digital inputs we can change the type of uh, IO by going down here and pressing the new one. Now the two types of I.O. that you'll work with most often will be the digital and the group. Now the group outputs and inputs are used for bytes of data uh, or partial bytes, whatever you need. Like for instance, if you had eight bits in a row of digital outputs which represented eight valves and you wanted to turn on uh, the first four at the same time if you have them set as a group output you can uh, just put in the binary value of 15 and turn on all four of the first valves uh, you can also reset all valves by setting them to zero it, we'll talk more about setting up group inputs and outputs later and configuring all this stuff but that is what they're used for they're used to group uh, digital inputs and outputs together so that you can manipulate them easier there's one other type of IO I'd like to cover briefly which is the interconnect this is used mostly for digital input to digital output transfer so if you had a slave module for this robot such as uh, the valves on that are on the robot's forearm are sending signals to the robot uh, through the slave module and the robot is sending uh, those signals to the PLC through its master module then you would use something like this if you want, to s uh, want the PLC to see something directly such as the status of uh, the valve saying whether or not we have a part you would simply say the digital input for the valve goes directly to a digital output that we're going to send to the PLC and this is something I want you mainly to be aware of we're not going to work too much with it but for a lot of applications they will use this stuff and it's hard to find where it's used unless you know to look for this and look in the certain areas that you need to. Uh, the next bit of data I want to cover is the data button right here. This contains your position register and register data. Um, now position register holds position data uh, such as a certain position's X, Y, Z, yaw pitch and roll information or its joint value depending on how you save it. While we are in this data uh, stream we can change to the register which will show the register values. Registers are plain and simply number holders. Uh, their actual use depends on how you're using them in the program. So as you've noticed, you can press this F1 key while you're in certain menus to change the type of that data you're looking at. This type button is pretty universal for this stuff and these two screens are going to be the most common ones that you use. Now we have the select button right here which allows you to pick a program that you want to uh, run or look at. So let's say we wanted to look at my test program right here. Uh, that uh, There it is right there, it's just opened up. Um, if we, for instance, want to change screens, we can always press the edit button to go back to this. Now, as for general navigation, um, you have the up and down keys right here to move in the program or left and right if you want to adjust stuff in this program. If you hold the shift key, you will jump around as you're moving. 
so you don't add a page at a time, which is more easily displayed while you're in the uh, out inputs and outputs. If you hold shift and go down, you're going a page at a time. Alternatively, you can press the item button right here and jump to a certain number. Um, in, the, in a program, this would be the line number. And inputs and outputs and registers will also be the input or output or register number. So if I say 5, we jump to a zero, zero output 5. And this is the main aspect of the navigation. We'll go into more detail as we go on and these become a little more useful.